I feel it. Go ahead and feel it now. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardamus Mr. Prime here, doing another Transformers figure review on the Transformers The Last Night Movies Voyager Class Scorn. If you're to pick this up, you can get it right now. Big, big, big. Get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. So I actually did pick this up at San Diego Comic Con this year. I've had it sitting around in packaging, so finally I get to open it. Anyway, on the side, we get this nice image of Scorn looking pretty cool. It says Transformers. We get Autobot symbol, and then on the back, you can see a couple of product shots, and then you can see Nitro right over there, which I need to get a hold of. Then we have Scorn, and then it just says Demolition Specialist, and there's not much more at the top and not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Scorn out of the packaging, looking pretty awesome. A pretty bulky figure, I might say. I do like this guy, too. A uh, very good transformation. It makes it fun, and I really like both modes a lot. So, this guy doesn't come with any accessories or anything, so let's get a closer look at his dino mode. So he's looking at the head sculpt of the Spinosaurus mode, and it looks great. I really dig it a lot, man. That is sweet. I like the little guard over the eyes right there. It's very, very tricky to see, but there are blue eyes behind those. I can't really show it off right now. Oh, there you go. See? Now you can see the blue eyes behind there. That's pretty awesome. I like that a lot. And I really love the choice of silver for this sky. You know, the silver just looks amazing throughout on this figure. Very bright, shiny, vibrant silver. And I like how it fades to red right over here. That's pretty sweet. He has a three claws right over there. Three fingers anyway. Looking pretty cool all the way throughout. These are pretty soft, so spines, you know, they're not going to break or anything, you know. And if you wanted to heat this up and straighten these out, or if I wanted to heat these up and straighten them out, I could. I'm sure I'm not the only one that comes with bended spikes, but now looking on the side right over here, you can see we have this big flat piece of gray. I kind of wish that they made this piece over here a red color because you don't see it in his robot mode. So it's not like we're losing anything, you know what I mean? Like if they'd made it red, it wouldn't have looked silly for his robot mode. Uh, I don't like this piece right underneath here. This is actually my biggest gripe of the figure is that his right arm is supposed to just be tucked underneath right over here. And you can see the hand and it makes his belly look extra big and everything. Like If you were to take that away, it would look a little bit more streamlined. But yeah, so I guess if you really wanted to, and if you wanted to get into, I don't know, parts forming, I guess you could slide this out right here. I've done that before with other figures with these kind of joints where I could slide them out. I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now because just me wiggling it like that, it was kind of stiff. Uh, you do get some gaps right over here uh, from bending the knees or the ankles around anyway. If you bend these ankles up or if you bend them back too much, uh, you're going to get some gappage, as you can see right over there. So if you have it posed more like how he should be, you know, he's not going to look you know, too weird. So, But still, gappage is there. It happens. The feet look pretty good. Nice silver dozies I like that and he does have these nice heels right over here looking pretty nice and I do like the tail the tail looks awesome again I love this very bright silver paint just looks fantastic and the tail is made out of a very soft material as well same soft material as the spikes right over here so that's pretty cool I like that so yeah not too bad uh, looking at dino mode I, I think this is just a much better version of the deluxe class figure that we'd gotten a couple years ago and actually comparing the two head sculpts you know looking at the deluxe class head sculpt for scorn compared to this Voyager class I mean man I, I do like this one much more a lot more details in it this one looks a little cartoony you know the little rounded bill right over there it's not really a bill but his snout so yeah even though the blue eyes are a bit covered up I do like this head sculpt more and I'll do a full-on size comparison later on but getting into the articulation for the dino mode we get quite a bit uh, you can move his head up and down you can churn side to side right over here and you also can rotate as well as moving the jaw that wide open so that's pretty cool I wish he could tilt his head up that would have been pretty cool but eh, you get a great range of movement still I think uh, the arms are on ball joints so you can move those forward and back and out just a little bit uh, he does have leg articulation where he can move forward and back you can get hit well that's just the transformation coming undone right there but you can get the hips moved outward that much and you will be able to bend him at the knee that much and you can move the ankles a little bit but as I mentioned earlier uh, you'll split this apart right over here so you get just a little bit of movement without that splitting but it's still moving some and then as far as the tail goes you can move the tail up 
that much. Uh, you can rotate the tail and it bends right over here and it also bends up here. So you get three points of bending upwards for the tail. So it's not too bad. Well, I guess the spines right over here are the spikes. You could move these, you know, if you'd wish, but that's more due to transformation. Now measuring the height of this Scorn figure, uh, you can see he's standing at about seven inches tall. And then measuring this guy out from nose to tail, uh, it looks like we're looking at about 12 inches across. And as I promised, here's your Scorn comparison. So here's the Deluxe Class Age of Extinction Scorn, and then here's our Voyager Class Last Night Scorn. And yeah, they both look really good. I mean, I like this one still, but yeah, Scorn's much better in Voyager Class form over here. I mean, come on, man. It looks like he's eating the little one's tail. And then here's Voyager Scorn to the not Deluxe Class, but another Voyager Class figure. Here's the Last Night Grimlock, and man, this looks so weak compared to the Scorn figure. I mean, this guy's just so much bulkier, larger. It just looks cooler. I think I saw somewhere, I may be mistaken, but I think I saw somewhere where Hasbro is making a new Voyager class Grimlock, where it could be a leader class Grimlock. I'm not sure, but I thought I saw a new Grimlock somewhere as a prototype. And then here's Voyager class Scorn next to the Voyager class STCC exclusive Optimus Prime. And I wanted to review this. I still would like to review it, but I don't have my damn tire piece. Ugh. This whole time since I've been home from San Diego, I've not been able to find the tire piece. I think I got shafted because while I was trying to pay for my stuff, uh, my cards wouldn't go through because, you know, they have these security things going on with your banks and stuff if you're out of town. It's like a fraud protection kind of thing. I'm sure you've been through it before if you've been at SDCC. But yeah, I'm hoping to find my tire piece, but I have a feeling I got shafted of the little Optimus Prime tire piece that's supposed to come with this guy. But you can see how much larger Scorn is than Optimus right over here. So I think that's actually pretty cool. I like how they scale. And then comparing Scorn to your average six inch scale figure. Here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man. Now as I said earlier, I do like the transformation on this guy. It's fairly simple, so let's get to it. We take us away, Bumblebee. Alrighty, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the feet. I like to start with the feet. So we're just going to swing this forward and then make sure that the heel is pushed up and then move that up and then push the heel up again. And then now we have a leg. So same thing over here. I'm going to move all that forward. Well, that again, push this forward first and then move this in and then push that up like so. And then now we have another foot. And then what we can do here is we could detach the legs. They just poured in right over there and they're going to pour it in right over there. And we can start separating the arms from the center. So this is going to detach right over here. You just pull that forward and it looks really messy. But we're going to rotate this around so that the legs are going to come down. So we're going to move this in. It has two hinges. We're going to move that in. Come on. Now make sure the legs facing straight so that the jaw doesn't get in the way and then move this in right here So dual hinge and it just collapses into the center right there forming a crotch piece And then we rotate this upward so that we could bring these on to the side right there And what you want to do is see you get a little slot right over there and you get a little tab uh, sticking out right over here. You can barely see it, but there's uh, there it is a little tab So you want to make sure that you aim for that You have to make sure that this is rotated upward when you're doing that or else it's not going to lock in but uh, Yeah, it's a little tricky to, to make sure that you're finding it correctly and a little bit easier to do off off camera But before I actually do that I want to make sure I get the head tabbed in so let's put those aside We're gonna take this piece and flip that out take this piece flip that out and then move this whole thing backwards right here and man I screwed up the order again this is just such a debauchery okay so moving that in between his legs and then moving the head down today's a baby shower by the way so yeah it's been pretty crazy here at the Shardimus Prime house just to throw that out there you know baby showers are pretty hectic and crazy man have a lot of people over the place you know I'm trying to get this thing tabbed in right over here and it's very tricky to do so I'm just trying to get that ported in properly without getting too frustrated with myself there it goes see there you go you just gotta relax and then it eases on in there we go all right and then now we have Voyager Scorn all transformed and looking awesome I love that both modes look fantastic I'm very pleased with this 
like how compact this gets over here. At first I thought, oh, no, that's kind of messy, but nah, it really doesn't look too bad, especially, you know, seeing it turn right here in the 360 view, right? Nah, not too bad. So anyway, let's get a closer look at that head sculpt. So I really like the head sculpt on this guy. Again, I really love that silver paint. We get that nice baby blue paint for the visor, looking very good. And for a quick head comparison, here's the deluxe class head sculpt compared to the Voyager. So yeah, you can see this Voyager class head sculpt is much more involved. Uh, we got the Autobot symbol right there on the chest, not looking too shabby. As I'd mentioned earlier with those ports on the side, you know, where it could be gray, you know, you're not seeing any of that right here in his robot mode. So yeah, again, I wish that was red, but I do like having the gray right here. I don't know if that was red, that wouldn't look bad either. But anyway, nice sculpted detail right over here. And I really like how the silver fades and everything on the arm. It's a little empty looking. I wish that had, I don't know, a panel or something like that to fill that out. But I like how the hand is sculpted for the most part. It looks pretty good. And I'm liking how the arm looks, you know, even though I don't like how it bends underneath. And then looking at the tail or his, I don't know, this is like his lance, his built-in lance. Looking pretty nice. A little bit of silver paint coming off the very end. So there's a little bit of wear on it. I like how the silver fades. I don't know, the, the way they executed that, I just think it looks really good. I mean, you see it throughout on the figure, but... Anyway, there's a crotch, which tends to split often for me. I, I don't like that. That's a little on the frustrating side, but, you know, it's behaving right now. It looks like he has crotch pincers right over there. And then here's the faux jaw, you know, so fake jaws right over here on the sides. Some nice silver paint, and then it's red on the other side. And we get that flat gray plastic again. And then here's looking at his legs, and the feet look pretty good. We get those night boots, not looking too shabby. This is a little bit weird, you know, with the dino feet sticking out of the back. That kind of bothers me a little bit, but not the worst thing. I mean, still, I really do like this robot mode a lot. And here's looking at the back, seeing everything all collapsed once again. Y para articulación, which means articulation in English, right? Okay. Anyway, uh, this is actually pretty good. You can move his head up due to the transformation. You can see this little panel lifting upward like that. So without that, it just barely moves up. But with that, you can get him looking up that much. Tricky to see on that side. And he will move down. Well, it's not really downward. It just levels off. Very pointy jaw. Very, very pointy jaw. Anyway, you get side to side movement right over there. And it doesn't really pivot too much. Uh, shoulder joint on this side moves outward. Same thing on this side right here. You could rotate these 360 degrees and then you get a bicep swivel on this side and then again you can move all those pieces right there. And then on this side you can move at the elbow that much and you get wrist rotation and then the fingers clamp together like that. So that's pretty cool. And unfortunately, we don't get a waist swivel with this guy. I really wish he did have one, but I can understand it due to the transformation. Uh, these panels right over here can flip up. So uh, you can also, ah, see, there's that crotch coming apart again, but without it coming apart, the legs will move outward that far. So that's not too bad. And then you can lift the legs and have them kick all the way up and move back. Uh, you also get a above the knee swivel right there. And then the knees bend in that far. And then the ankle can move down, moves up, and he does have some ankle pivot. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is that he has a little culito right over there, which is perfect for putting him on a flight stand, even though finding the right flight stand for him to peg into is difficult. Uh, this is, I think, the Storm Collectibles Mega Man X figure stand, and it goes right into the culo, and now you can have him in the air if you wanted to have some dynamic poses. I took some shots of him, you know, jumping in the air and stuff like that. I thought it was kind of neat that you could do that, so pretty cool, right? Pew pew, bang bang, bang bang bang. Now to measure out this Voyager class figure, you can see that Scorn is standing just at around seven and a half inches tall. And then for your Scorn comparison, we have the Deluxe Class Age of Extinction Scorn next to our Voyager Class The Last Night Scorn. I feel like I didn't transform this right. I don't remember the torso being tapered in so much. Maybe I should drag those legs in closer to the torso. But anyway, you can see a big difference right over here. This guy just looks so much better to me and reminds me of how Scorn looked in the movie a lot more than this one right here. And then here's our Voyager Scorn next to our Voyager class, The Last Night Grimlock. And you can see for their robot modes, I do like the height difference between these two more. I do like that Grimlock is standing just a little bit taller, but he's still a lot skinnier than this guy. I just like how this one's proportioned out. He's not too husky. I just think these are really good proportions. And then 
in here, scoring next to the Voyager Clasp Optimus Prime retail version, and you can see Prime is just a little taller than Scorn. Eh, they're not in scale together, but eh, not bad. And then here's Scorn once again next to the Marvel Legends big time no let down Spider-Man. So again, obviously I think this is a great figure. I'm very happy with it, and I had to get him in this dynamic pose right over here with the foot kicked out, because he has the great leg articulation. I mean, where else are you going to see a Scorn figure pose like this, huh? Just the Shortness Prime channel, that's it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think of the figure. Let me know what you think of the review, even though I'm doing it under a weird time crunch right now. And if you want to see more Shardimus Prime videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know immediately when the next Shardimus Prime video is posted. Gotta give a big thank you to all these incredible people for stepping up and helping out on this YouTube channel. Also, if you want to see a photo gallery of images, it'll be over at ShardimusPrime.net. And I will catch you guys later. Boost! I'm gonna play with my toys today. 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 Well, I don't care what strangers say. I'm gonna play with my toys today. That's crispy. We're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face.